for the most part to the uh, January 11th meeting, so we didn't take any action on that one. Then there was the uh, Community of Hope preliminary plat, which you're familiar with in regards to the, uh, the habitat project that's been planned, and we approved uh, that plat. And then the Town Plaza subdivision number two record plat, uh, we approved that. However, that's not going to come to you guys for, for a little while, is my understanding. So those are really the only items that I have to discuss. Council? Questions? Question about the Community of Hope uh, plat. So based on your assessment, assessment of the commission as well as advice from staff, is this fully in compliance with our current development code? Yes. Yeah, they had the variances that are now removed. So um, it is, uh, from my understanding and from staff's understanding, 100% compliance with the code. Anyone else? Pretty easy. That's right. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Magnet. John Maynard. This gives you more time. Yeah, much drama. Good evening, Mayor, Ms. Hood, Council. Great to be here. I've handed you a uh, little year-end kind of highlights, wrap-up of things that have been going on within the Mag Organ Magnet organization. I'm not going to read all of them to you. I do want to point out a couple of what I think are the highlights, and then I'd be more than happy to uh, certainly answer any questions you have on these or anything else that you'd like to ask me. I might artfully dodge or refuse to answer a question if you ask me something that I can't answer, um, but I'll, uh, I'll give it my best shot anyway. Again, Magnet is the uh, regional economic development organization that you participate in, and we work all of Cape Toronto County, some of North Scott County, and we also sometimes help in Southern Perry and Bollinger and, and just the region. Uh, on your page, I have some project activity overviews at the top. Currently, we have 24 active projects representing 670 jobs and about $58 million in investment that we're working on. Jump down to select economic successes from this past year. We have Idyllic and SI03, which began construction of their 60,000 square foot manufacturing facility in the Greater Cape Girardeau Business Park. They're also going to retain their Nash Road facilities. Old Hickory Pitts added another building to their facility on Nash Road as well. He continues to operate in two locations, both the Main Street location and the Nash Road location. Eventually, we'll move everything to the Nash Road location. He hasn't started his new building yet, his second building out there yet, has he? Yes, he has. He has started yeah. now? Yes, okay. it's there. Do you have a time frame? No. Was there a deadline imposed? There was a deadline imposed on initial construction on the land when he was sold, and he met yeah. that deadline. Yeah. Okay, it's a great question, though. Uh, probably the project that has received the most attention and the most, uh, I guess, media from all angles and, and certainly a significant impact for a long time to come is the Marquette Tech District project. That happened this year as well. Of course, it includes three buildings, the Marquette Tower, the H&H, &H, and the Marquette Center. Uh, it is the home of many startup companies that have uh, come from efforts there. It is also the home of the Chamber now, the Magnet Organization, and the CBB. I know that most of you have been through the facility, and certainly it's a, that's, that's a highlight of, of 2016. The other one that you may not be aware of that I throw in there for the uniqueness of it is the Jackson Egg Company, which has announced that they have started business. Uh, these are two young guys from Jackson that are agricultural majors out of the University of Missouri-Columbia. And they are, in, they are a free range egg collection, grading, and distribution business. Um, they are opening a location at a, at a, I believe they're gonna end up in Scott City, don't quote me yet, Mark, don't quote me yet on that one. They're looking at facilities um, and eventually would like to end up closer to Jackson. They're two Jackson guys, but they have recently landed two significant contracts which has put them over the edge and allows them to be able to distribute eggs. On the front end, they had secured agreements verbally to, uh, for as many as 50,000 dozen eggs a week. So I don't know exactly what that correlates to, but that's a bunch of eggs. 
So um, that's what they are. A lot of omelets. <laughs> It has no correlation to anything else that's going on this evening. Uh, anyway, two young guys that are uh, very entrepreneurial, great risk takers. Um, awesome guys, kind of stuff you like to see. Jump down to data benchmarks. I provide, provide those for you just for you to review and take a look at. Really only going to mention a couple of things. The second bullet point, talk about three-year employment trend for Cape County, is good. Um, I will tell you that the one-year employment trend is not that good. It's about even or down a little bit. So the three-year employment trend is nice, but the one-year has been stagnant or down a little. Uh, my sources there are Merrick, which is a, a website that we use for the state of Missouri quite often. The other one I, I wanted to call your attention to is the last bullet point. For the CMO region, for the Southeast Missouri region, these are the high growth industries year over year, 2015 over 2014. Um, and you'll see there that they include management of professional companies, they include educational services, professional and technical services, accommodation and food services, and transportation and warehousing. Those are the largest high growth areas year over year for us in this particular area. On the back, we continue to do our business retention and expansion visits. Um, Shad Burner with our organization does most of those. In 2016, we did more than 40, representing more than 13,000 employees, high employee count because we did healthcare also did commercial banking and financial companies. A couple of things there for you to, to read through um, along with those visits, but I do want to point out that again, again, something that we've already known is that the need for health care, mental health care facilities and mental health care issues to be addressed is, is uh, certainly out there among the health care groups. Infrastructure advocacy, you see four bullet points there. The biggest one I want to mention is that we worked with the Jackson Industrial Development Council this past year. Uh, Magnet pledged one year's worth of interest for them as they pursued and built a 50,000 square foot speculative building on Route PP. Uh, that building was built with high ceilings and with no floor and basically some opportunities for garage doors and, and different things like that that would be a build to suit kind of thing and we are actively marketing that particular building. Workforce development highlights, a couple of things to let you know about. Partnered with Codify on Code Cape which is a coding training class that allows everyone from people who are repurposing in their life, maybe older folks that are doing something different, as well as very young people who are interested in coding as a profession. And that's basically programming and that type of thing with, uh, with everything from apps to computer stuff to, to various things that, uh, that the IT folks are looking for in today's world. We also hosted our first manufacturing day. We had six local manufacturers participate and had more than 200 students attend that are interested in looking at what today's manufacturing looks like as opposed maybe to what they thought manufacturing might look like. And then at the bottom I put two other significant happenings. Um, you can see the first one that you're aware of and the second one is, is absolutely more to come very soon and that's the agreement with Catalyst Commercial. They will begin recruiting retail industry <coughs> in January of 2017. They are finishing, I thought I might have it tonight and I don't, they are finishing uh, the marketing reports and, and area reports for the Cape Girard the city of Cape Girardeau. And as soon as we have those, those will be delivered to you as well, made available on the websites, uh, also made available to the, uh, the developers that have land that these folks will be talking to. But you'll see that recruiting uh, begin right away after the Christmas season. Those are my highlights. I would be more than happy to answer questions that you may have. First, let me, uh, let me do this too, because I see Wayne sitting there. So this past year, we also, brought in a member. So Mark Lanzati, who served maybe eight years, eight years, served quite some time on the board, um, left as he left council. And Wayne Bowen has been with us, joined us, I guess, in probably May. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been a pleasure to have Wayne in the room. And of course, um, the mayor has stayed on the board as well. Again, Magnet is made up of City of Cape, Cape County, City of Jackson, City of Scott City, and Chamber <coughs> representation, Cape Chamber representation. Questions I can answer. John, on your first uh, activity overview, uh, great, the 24 active projects. I think that's, we're all pleased with that, and, and, and those are under, under and going in some phase now. But comment on the three that we lost, um, just reasons, and any, anything looming out there that we can do different? Um, I, I would say, 
those fall into, into several different categories. And obviously part of the reasons that we ask the questions all the time is to be able to isolate those. Sometimes it has to do with resources, just available resources and access to those. And I mean everything from a certain kind of wood or a certain whatever that we may have been in the ball game for a while, but maybe there was a better spot someplace else. Um, the state of Missouri loses sometimes um, based on our what we may or may not have in place on work rules or work conditions relative to other states. We may stay in the game for a while. And then again, if there's a similar location someplace else that somebody can can do, that's, that's another thing. Um, we, as we all know, do not have the, uh, um, it can be a little more expensive to build here than it can in other places. Um, that is because of our seismic situation. Now, if you're comparing us to the rest of Southeast Missouri or just as far north as Jefferson County or a little bit east or west, that's not a big deal. But if somebody's looking for a Midwest distribution center on an interstate highway and we're up against 44 quarter or 70 quarter, then sometimes that can, that can hurt us as well. If land is relatively the same from a cost standpoint, but cost to build may be different and there may be some insurance issues with that. Um, workforce has not knocked us out of anything at this point, but workforce has rapidly moved up the chart as being the number one concern of folks that are coming into an area that employ any more than 25 or 30 people. If they're gonna do a significant hire, then they wanna make sure that the workforce is available for them to do that. Um, and, and right now that's not knocked us out of any deals, but we continue to work on that issue because we know how important it is. And, and that's why we do some of these other things that we have listed on there for you. Okay. John, you mentioned manufacturing, or excuse me, transportation and warehousing as an area where there has been job growth and demand. Mm -hmm. Could you speak a little bit about the Shawnee Parkway uh, developments formerly known as I-66 in a different version? Yes, and it is, it's on your sheet under infrastructure advocacy is the first bullet point. Um, it is continuing in its current form, which is now a piece to connect uh, basically 3 and 146 over to 57. It was reduced by IDOT. Uh, it was reduced with good intentions in that they believe that this is something that they can get done. Um, having said that, the stuff you've got to go through at the federal level to do a project like this is amazing to me and I can't even begin to explain it all to you but here's what I know going through the meetings and meeting all the the criteria that they have to meet through all of the environmental all, all of those other kinds of things this is a process and a half and we all know that there are some folks in southern Illinois that that don't want to see this built they generally reside within those communities they reside within the um, certainly the environmental groups so they are challenging this at different points along the way it is slowing it down, but IDOT is still purposeful. They still believe that that, that four-lane piece from 3146 over to 57 can be done. Um, I hope that we'll have another meeting, certainly by March or April of 2017, to talk about progress. And then I think when that piece is, is on the board with what may be happening at the national level with infrastructure money, that could put us in a good position. Um, I also believe that IDOT won't quit there. If that piece is in, is in place, then I do believe they'll look for the connecting piece between 57 and 24, which, which then completes what we're trying to do. You bet. Council, uh, Wayne and I have been in the, these meetings monthly, so any other council have comments or questions or do a great job. We get 24 active projects right now. That's that's saying something. Yeah. Yeah. Pleased with. It's a great investment on our part and um, a, uh, a coordinated effort. Everybody's got a piece of that to keep magnet magnet together. It's Jackson, the county, uh, chamber, and uh, in Scott City. So everybody benefits. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. Chicken discussion. Who's taking the chicken discussion? Well, um, Mayor, Council, Eric, are you going to review the memo that you prepared to Council? I, well, I had not planned on it, but uh, I, can, uh, I can review with you what was presented in this, uh, uh, in this memorandum. The, uh, because the Council had asked that this item be placed on the 
on an agenda for discussion. Um, what we have done uh, since the request also was to pattern that discussion after the ordinance in effect in the city of Columbia was to, uh, to bring back the proposal that had been presented to the council in 2010. That uh, proposal had been patterned after the uh, ordinance in the city of Columbia, um, almost, almost verbatim. The, uh, the only changes to the city of Columbia uh, ordinance that are included here are set out in the memorandum. Uh, the, the proposal that was mentioned in uh, 2010 uh, referred to having 10 chickens. This proposal, as requested by the, uh, the citizens that have requested it and uh, as set out in the ordinance in the city of Columbia, refers to six chickens. Um, it is also, uh, it also contains a number of, um, of, of provisions that would uh, uh, get rid of some uh, inconsistent ordinances that we have in the city of Cape Girardeau that prohibit chickens and, uh, and reorganize the sections in, uh, in chapter six to put them in a, in a, in a, better, uh, uh, in a better location. The, uh, the points that are here um, are, are listed at the bottom of the memorandum. Uh, it adds a provision that uh, uh, would make it unlawful to raise chickens for slaughter. That issue is not raised in the Columbia Ordinance. Um, the uh, Columbia Ordinance refers to, or has a section that prohibits the running of chicken, allowing chickens to run at large. Uh, however, that particular uh, section does not refer to anything about chickens running at large. It only says that if a dog or, uh, or other animal uh, eats a chicken that is at large, they will not be construed to be a, a, a violent or vicious dog because they have eaten the chicken. Um, the, uh, the 2010 proposal also included in the, for the city of Cape Girardeau a, a requirement to, for the person to register their, uh, their name, address, and the number of chickens that uh, um, at the request of the city manager has been removed from this, um, from this proposal. And uh, it also does not include uh, one of the items mentioned uh, in the prior discussion about a requirement for clipping the wing or wings of the chickens to prohibit their ability to fly. Um, the other items that are uh, are listed there are uh, included in the memorandum, but this is solely uh, given to you for discussion purposes. It's my understanding that uh, that city staff and the planning services department and in the police department, uh, at some point in the future, if the council decides to uh, um, proceed with this, would like to be able to make uh, additional comments of some of their observations. Uh, so having to do with the chickens and the staff would like mm -hmm. additional That's my understanding, yes. Mm -hmm. Who would that be? The police department and the planning services. <coughs> I might have overlooked it. Already in this I might have overlooked it. That's my understanding, yes. That was as of yesterday. Well, not yesterday, but Friday. So, Mayor Council, we really wanted to bring it back uh, for your discussion this evening okay. and direction on how you would like staff to proceed. If you would like to bring back an ordinance uh, for your review and consideration at a future meeting, if you would like staff to uh, do some additional research and, and have uh, those uh, development services staff and police staff uh, review the ordinance and, and provide their comments and recommendations. So really looking to you this evening on how you would like to proceed at this point. Um, I know at the last meeting, Mr. Bard had talked about if an ordinance were to proceed that um, he was looking at a, an effective date of April. April. And um, while it seems like that might be a lot of time, uh, he also talked about providing some educational classes and forums at the Shawnee Center. And so uh, staff thought the sooner that uh, we can move this forward, um, if council does wish to proceed with it, that would allow him time to organize those classes okay. and get the public right. educated. So council? Questions, comments? I think if there are other staff and the police department want to have input to this, I think we ought to give them an opportunity to do so. You know, what looks like it's not going to be nice if it's the first year. I think I'd like to have that information and see what they say. Okay. 
Okay. What was the reasoning that we would not allow chickens to be raised for slaughter? Were you saying that would be in the 2016 draft that you would be presenting to council? That uh, language was included in the 2010 draft, and I only pointed out that that is a difference between the language of the 2010 draft and the City of Columbia ordinance. It's not in the 2016 draft. It's, it is in the material that um, is given for you that uh, that, it, that that is not included. I mean, excuse me, that um, that it is uh, it's not addressed in the Columbia ordinance, but it is in the proposal. I, I, what it's referring to is for slaughter for commercial purposes. It's referring to slaughter. But it's referring to slaughter for commercial purposes. Commercial business. I, for one, would like to see a preliminary ordinance brought forward so we can start moving on this and uh, they can bring in their discussion and we can amend it if we need to and uh, have a discussion during a normal ordinance process. That would be my feelings okay. about it. Anyone else? Robbie? Um, just getting uh, police and planning services involved as soon as possible so that we can make a uh, educated decision as proof. I would be interested in well to walk through the nuisance process. And if someone calls to complain about chickens after this has passed, what would that happen? What are the steps the city would follow? Uh, I'm also interested in the potential impact that I did ask the city attorney's office about homeowners associations or historic districts who might have a ban on chickens within their limits um, and what impact this might have on it. Uh, and also be interested in getting impact from other agencies that are relevant to county health, uh, whether the Missouri Department of Agriculture has a policy on this or recommend guidance, particularly dealing with things like avian flu and salmonella. I know we received information from Mr. Barton, this is very helpful, but but that staff is not directly in this direction. So it looks like the next step would be number one, um, a preliminary um, copy of a draft of an ordinance. Um, for uh, review and discussion by council, presented by staff. And then at uh, the January 9th meeting, a, uh, a uh, report from any and all staff um, as to their, uh, with their input, uh, questions, comments, et cetera, to, to council on same subject. Harry, with all due respect, I would like to see the department speak before a draft an ordinance is written. I mean, I wouldn't. Well, we, we actually do have a draft ordinance attached to this memo, which mimics the Columbia ordinance. And so I think what we were trying to elicit this evening is whether or not a council is comfortable with uh, copying the Columbia ordinance, if there's any changes, as Eric mentioned. Um, for example, the provision for not having, um, not slaughtering chickens within the city limits. So I think we'd like to get some more direction from council on the, the draft ordinance that's here, proposed here. We, then we can go back to, to staff, get their feedback, and come back in January with a, a more co comprehensive overview. Okay. And then my other question, which I guess planning may help with as well. Um, well, first, I'd like to second Lane's comment on having the health department come. I mean, I have no clue what happens when there is an outbreak uh, of, of some type of disease that's transmitted via poultry. You know, does, is the city of Cape uh, going to be able to tell people that they need to slaughter all these chickens if there is a risk that that needs to happen? You know, we're going to have people telling us that these are pets when they're not pets, the chickens. Yeah, but let's, 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 let us get through first. So, so that would be one. I'd like to get some input from the health department. And then the, the second would be if we're blanketly proposing that um, chickens be allowed in the entire city of Cape, what planning has to say about that? We heavily regulate what a PUD would do during development. Um, if, if they run into a situation uh, at Walden Park where someone wants to raise chickens and it's prohibited, uh, the city isn't gonna get involved at all, which we talked about this during the stormwater 
study session. Uh, if the city doesn't get involved, no one is really going to get involved and no one has any authority to get involved. So we would really be telling all those planned communities that they're now going to have to expect to deal with the property owners and those locations themselves. I, I don't know what all of the concerns that would be raised by planning are, uh, are going to be, but I, I would know that a couple of them would be, um, would it be allowed in every zoning district or only in particular zoning districts? Uh, would the, uh, 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 would the, sh the, mm -hmm. the shelter for the chickens be considered an accessory structure? Um, because some of those accessory structures, as you saw from the material that was presented to council, are mobile. And, uh, and how can those have a certain distance away from a property line? There will be comments like that that would be coming from planning. That's, I think, what I'd be interested in. I think that's what council's interested in, is hearing the various staff and health, outside staff, um, at the January 9th meeting in their, in our study session. So just for clarification, would you like staff's input based on the draft ordinance as attached to your material this evening? I'd like to hear all of staff's concerns. Yeah. After reading the Columbia ordinance, I, I see what you're asking, Molly. As far as that, if that was the sample starting point, I think the Columbia ordinance is the point. And then having staff's input, maybe it's tweaked throughout the process. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. planning can obviously provide input on in terms of how to regulate the structures and things like that. And police can comment on the enforcement of that set ordinance. But that's that's where we need to know if you're comfortable with starting with Columbia. Start, yes. Starting. Okay. I, I think so. Starting there, and and go from there. But I'm very interested in staff's pr perspective. Okay. And. Several brought up health, and I think that's that's pertinent too. <clears throat> and put it back on for the ninth study session. For study session. On the ninth, we have all the information that we think we need to do a better evaluation of what we're looking at on the ninth. But when we come back, we will. Okay. So we have we'll come back with a comprehensive evaluation okay. staff recommendation on what uh, we foresee is any um, problems or uh, whatnot and then and based council can this, give us based, based on, on the right. ordinance as um, okay. attached exactly. to your material this evening yeah. and then council can give us direction as to whether or not you want to proceed with an ordinance at a, a following meeting for first reading okay and, and then count all of those hours and send a bill to Andrew Barr. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would ask, I mean, this, this just came available on Friday. It might be out of order. So, sorry. I mean, I would ask that, uh, and I've asked this before about other issues, that we get this information much with much more time in advance because the Friday before a Monday meeting is not enough time on anything of significance to think about, to research it, to consider it, to get other input. And so, from Friday to Monday is not enough time for a decision in most of these cases. And so, you know, uh, if it's the Friday before the January 9th meeting, that's not going to do much good. I just want, if there's anything we can get prior to that to enable us to deliberate more carefully on any issue, not just changes. Um, but, you know, we've talked about this before, that should be helpful. Well, it's not like we're going to be making a decision on January 9th. I mean, we just get, get preliminary information so that. Definitely down, not down to decision time. We're, we're getting more input at this point. So even after you have the first reading of the ordinance, you're going to have. But you, you just said you just asked, time. are you comfortable with the Columbia ordinance moving forward? And I got it on Friday. So honestly, I had time to read it, and I've looked through all the other materials for the for the council session, but it's just not enough reaction time. So any night you want me to make a decision Friday before is not typically going to be enough time for me to react about that. No, we're not. We're, I, I'm not saying. We're going to base this off the Columbia. Let's start the discussion sure. from the draft of the uh, that we proceeded from the, and and this is not in council. This will not be in council meeting. We'll still be in in study session. So, yeah. Okay. All right. Anything else, council staff? Anything, Eric? Anything? Okay. All right. Uh,
Okay, anyone to bear before the council on any item that is not on the agenda tonight? Is it questions for me? I have here. You got this is not the chicken thing at all. Any questions or let's talk about tonight? Right. Thank you very much. Okay. Very good. Anyone else on anything not on the agenda? Any item? Okay. Um, agenda. Hey. Mayor Council, um, we'll, we'll have Pastor Zach Strong here for our invocation this evening. We do not have any presentations this evening. Is there anything that council would like to report on? Um, one thing that I was, that was brought to my attention through the Cape Girardeau Public Schools strategic planning, and that is <clears throat> there are some surveys out online uh, through capetigers.com. I believe that is it. I'll double check during uh, the four meeting. But uh, surveys about the new superintendent search, and they would really like some public input uh, um, on that. So. Okay. Anyone else? I attended the ministerial alliance meeting on the 13th, and we'll make a brief comment about that. Okay. I have nothing other than uh, holiday wishes for myself. It's been kind of quiet the last 10 days. Okay, staff, anything? No, just a reminder that with the holidays, a trash pickup and recycle pickup will be different, so please pay attention to that information that's available online and on the city's website. Um, we have no public hearings this evening. On the consent agenda, items two and three are second and third readings uh, from the last meeting, the first one having to deal with the definition of yard, and item number three having to do with the zoning of property on South Sprig Street. Um, item number four is an agreement with Fronneberger Concreters for the downtown sidewalk replacement and lighting project. Um, they were the low bid. We, we got great bids on that project below our engineer's estimate. Uh, so we're excited to proceed with that project in January. Just a question on mm -hmm. that. Uh, uh, there was a small alternate there with, what, four additional lights? What, 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 why was that an alternate and not part of the bid and where do they go? I, Mayor, I can get the information before the regular meeting for okay. you. I'll have to touch base with Casey on that. Okay. I think it was four lights. Yeah, it know. was for a couple additional lights. Yeah. Okay. Is that because the bid came in low? We were kind of few more. We did have the alternate, so that if the price came in low, we right. could include the alternate. But I need to go back and verify what. Yeah, but all the that included. All the bidders bid the alternate also. The bidders bid the bid the alternate also. It would just seem like unusual. Do we make any changes to uh, incorporate the concerns about lighting? You know, and asking for a little bit more lumens on the street and more lumens on the Broadway? Yes. It'll be bright. They will be. They will not be the same lights as on Broadway. They will be brighter. Okay. Okay. Items five through nine are all professional service agreements with varying transportation um, and engineering firms. Um, this was done uh, in November. We put out a request for qualifications for transportation and engineering services uh, to assist us with uh, the administration of SEMPO, which is the Southeast Metropolitan Planning Organization. And we've also included um, provision in there that if, if the city needed help with a um, data collection or something for a transportation project we could issue task orders for that work as well so this simply is the agreement which allows us to issue future task orders uh, for help with those transportation related projects for SEMPO and that will free up uh, <coughs> planning staff's time to, to focus more on NBI comprehensive plan update and things like that and your expectation for these are not added to our financial obligation but that use SEMPO pass-through funds for these projects? This is primarily for SEMPO. Okay. That's not to say that if we need a data collection or a traffic study for a TTF project or right. something like that, we could issue a task order, but the funding would have to be available for that. Um, item number 10 is for a transportation project agreement between the city, Mid-America, and Mid-America Crossing Transportation Development District. This is related to the TDD that is being established at Center Junction. 
this agreement essentially states that the city will accept those improvements and, and maintain those improvements um, going forward. And then lastly, item 11 on the consent agenda is the preliminary plat for the Community of Hope project. Are there any items that council would like removed from the consent agenda? Okay, if not, we have two new ordinances. The first is an ordinance accepting a general warranty deed from Mid-America for the Sportsplex property located on Jim Drury Way. This is an emergency reading, so it will be the first, second, and third reading. Um, any questions on that? What was the need for the emergency? That, that needs to be completed before the end of the year. And it could not be done until the preliminary plat um, was recorded, which just happened on Friday. So. Um, you'll remember at your last meeting in December, you had the second and third reading of the plat. We had to wait 10 days before we could record that. And so the, just the way the timing worked, um, we need to do this as an emergency. Just accepting the donation of the 10 point whatever acres. It also could not be transferred until the judge had signed the order creating the transportation development district. And that was signed on the 16th also. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Eric. And then lastly, we have an ordinance uh, renaming Wigwam Lane to Walden Boulevard. This is for a short leg of the street that uh, where you enter Walden Park off of LaCroix, Route W there. Um, it's really um, all the properties there are currently addressed off of Walden, so it's really more of a housekeeping issue uh, to straighten that out, eliminate any confusion. Question? I was getting ahead of myself. And, uh... On the consent agenda, I'd mm -hmm. like to remove approval of the preliminary plat of community and hope of hope for the purposes of voting on the uh, regular uh, ordinances. Okay. So, you want, okay, you just remove item eleven from the consent agenda. So we can, and vote then we'll individually. On okay. That. Yeah, we can do that. Council will have to um, amend the agenda when we go to the adoption of the agenda then. Okay. And then uh, we have appointments to Magnet, um, which you heard And that will evening. be reappointments at the uh, pleasure of the Council of uh, Councilman Bowen and, and myself for next year. Those are done annually. We would both like to uh, maintain our uh, seat there. And then I believe we are going to um, ask for a motion to postpone the appointments to the CBB Executive Board. Yeah, this is unusual, Council, because this is this is new, and we have three being appointed at the chamber, and three being appointed by us, and um, we haven't got quite all the names together yet or applications all together yet. Uh, I know Chamber had a lot of applications uh, come through. So I don't think we're quite ready to do that. We thought we would be, but we're not quite ready to do that. I think what we'll do, what we should do there when we get down to 15 is I'll make that comment and then I'll ask for a motion to uh, postpone till the uh, January 9th meeting and then we'll be ready with the three chamber and in the three city. One's going to be for sure uh, Mr. Maynard and one's going to be our city manager for sure. And then there's two chamber and two here that we are, are, are still working with. So if we will, we can do that, that would be great. Okay. And uh, lastly, you have a memo regarding the appointment to the board of examiners. Yeah, I got a question there. You know, counts those of you who were around, we, uh, we've we kicked this around several times, whether the, that should revert back to a staff, um, staff action, and, and we about got there uh, once or twice, and, and then we, they, the, the board of examiners came and said they really want to keep that together, and we did that. Now it's come back again. Um, 
do we want to, and we don't have any other applications? No, no new applications. No new applications. Do we want to address that again um, to bring that in-house? Um, how many times did we meet? Did they meet this this year? Um, in 2016, four the times. board met four times. Four times. I'd like to propose that we nominate board. I really think we've reached a point after going through this for two years at least that would be my feeling to um, to work toward eliminating the uh, the board of examiners. That's not on the agenda tonight. But I'm looking for other thoughts from council to to proceed in that manner. Wayne, you were you've yeah, been a you've been a part of this since the beginning. To struggle to get uh, even currently serving members to, to continue, and uh, it's really, in my perspective, as a staff function. Yeah, it's a binary: either someone is qualified or not. They meet the requirements or they don't. There's really not a subjective measure that goes to determine this. I value the work and the expertise of the members who have served on it, but I'm not sure it's worth their time or staff time. Yeah, and and our time in, in evaluating whether it's really more of a staff function anyway on a recommendation, so, Bob. Having not been here on that discussion for the last time, why did the council decide just to keep the board in Outcry, Outcry from, from, the from the current board. Yeah, which could happen again. I, I don't know. If you've got current board members that don't want to serve again, then you won't have a full board to begin with, and you don't have and people that are qualified that want to be on the board, then that makes it yeah. a pretty easy decision. Yeah. In addition, but there have been some recent amendments which have reduced the, the scope of what they're reviewing. They've actually, um, in, in December earlier this year, there was an ordinance where we actually gave more administration power to, to staff and took that away from the board. So mm -hmm. slowly their purview has been reduced and we've had a hard time finding applicants for the board. Um, so just a little bit more background there as well. Okay, well if we have that consensus from uh, from that, we'll, we'll proceed that way. So would you, would you like staff to bring an ordinance yes. forward like we did previously yeah. to repeal yes. the board? Yes, that's what we're going to ask to do. Yeah, okay. let's do that. Okay. Um, council, um, no need for a closed session this evening. Uh, any other comments or anything else to come, Council, to uh, attention before we adjourn? Pardon? No. Okay. No. I see him. I see him sitting here, Mayor, and uh, I just want to just publicly say, since we have a minute, uh, I was observing city staff taking up the leaves, and they were doing an excellent job. I watched them uh, hit a large amount of leaves in my neighborhood, and not only did it fill up the truck. They came right back and finished the job, and they continued on. And uh, I've watched them for, I, driving around town. I'll see them doing their job, and it appears to me the leaf process has improved immensely since we have the collection trucks we do. The other comment I have to make is before you get off of that, uh, that's very true because, uh, as Steve and Public Works and staff know, I had more complaints about leaf trucks that the leaf pickup. Those those year first year early years of my years, that it was almost the point. Maybe we don't need to pick them up, but it's a great service for our city. It's a great service for our city that that would go very missed if it if it wasn't. And we really, I, I have not had one this year at all. I'd like to brag a little bit. You can um, brag too. Okay, <laughs> and I'll brag on Steve's behalf, but uh, our current leaf truck driver actually won the Public Works Employee of the Year Award. Jacob Bush um, has been driving the leaf truck this year and he's done a phenomenal job. Um, he's typically on the solid waste crew, but uh, he's been driving the leaf truck this, uh, this fall and winter and he's been doing an exceptional job. Great. Go ahead, Steve, you had your hand raised. And you'll you'll that that the swoop now will be on a, on an organized. You'll just keep going. 
all the way through. Yep, and I applaud that effort because uh, the way the leaves fell this year, uh, most of them didn't start falling until zone. The first zone was almost done, so uh, coming back and catching those is a great uh, service. And, uh, anyway, well, pass pass it on. Yeah, he's doing. Yeah, uh, I mean, I watched job. him doing it, and he was doing a good job. And then came back and finished it uh, very quickly. These, these are leaves that otherwise, or this because of this, stay out of our trash. Yep. Out of our gutters. Yep. Stay right. Out of, yeah. Uh, the temptation to be burned. So right. it's all and. And the second item I had was yeah. uh, I observed two of our police officers doing an exemplary job, and I will relay that information to Chief Blair when uh, I get him alone for a minute. Okay. So, but I just want to publicly say they're doing their work, and they, and uh, from my viewpoint, they did a good job, and uh, I'm going to point it out to their boss. Anyone else? Okay, we'll stand adjourned, reconvene at 7 p.m. Council, get this? I didn't get it. Cup of Bruce. Let's see. You like her? Yes, sir. Did you, get, did you get this? But, but essentially, that's what it's going to be. So if it's on there, I'll try to remember it. But if it's on there, then, then I don't have to remember it. I'm just saying, we could have a line there.
I get it when it's not paper. Yeah. Unless there is something. So, it doesn't make sense. I don't have to put it So, what I'm saying is put it up. Definitely put it before a journey. Yeah. However, you want to do it. Yeah. 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 Yeah.